Hi, welcome back. In this video, we will continue with our sketch. Yeah, um, I actually think the darks could go a little bit darker, maybe to 40. Yeah, starts looking good. Then I will duplicate this darks layer, turn off the other two, and this next darks, I'm just gonna call it darks two. And that will be all the areas that I want to be extra dark. And everything else I'm just gonna delete. And since we already have one dark layer, I know that this is gonna be like layer two of darks. And I think only really what's happening here, none of this needs to be extra dark, not none of this, not even this frame. I think basically just the motor, some parts of this tire, And because I'm not seeing really well, I'll increase it just so I can see better. Um, I don't think any of those need it. Nothing here. And I zoom in. And yeah, looking here, I don't want any of this to be extra dark, but I do want these cavities here kind of to be extra dark. I think that can add a little bit of punch to the motor without calling too much attention to itself. And for these areas I'm just gonna lightly soften that extra darkness like this. Same thing here so that it looks like the inside of those pipes is what's the extra dark part. Same thing here. And then under here, I just want to explain that this is concave and, and the darkest parts are right in there. And then I do something similar over here for the extra darks. Just soften it up a little bit. And let's see what that looks like. I take that down to probably 35. And I take this extra dark off and on. Okay, works. Now I do the very same thing with lights. So I go to my base coat, click command, and then on that picture, I get the whole thing, turn off all other things. But then I start thinking, where do I want some strong whites to sh appear? And I think I want some strong whites to appear on this bar. So I paint it in just by click, shift, click. I also want this little area to be have a strong white. Um, I want this part of the bar to have strong white and this part, maybe this fender right here this right here, this and this and here but I don't want to overdo it, I don't want to add tons of, of white because then it takes away um, it, it, if you overdo the white it just looks um, too it, it has a tendency to not look as nice where you actually do place the whites. So, um, whoops, that was not what I wanted. And right now I realized that I placed all of the, those whites on my base. That is not good. So I have to go in and fill out my base again. And I just wasted about 30 seconds, so no problem. Now I have a new layer. And I call that layer whites. And now I have to redo that. But that goes quick. Click, shift, click. I'll do that whole thing. I want that. I want this area to have white. That area, a little bit of white right there. A little bit of white right there. A little bit of white right there. There. 
there, top of that bar, some right there, some right there, and some right there, and a touch right there. Okay, now I can go into these areas, use a full, full hard round brush first, and clean up the areas that I don't want it to have these nice wider highlights. Like here, for example. And you want to be kind of precise with this. You don't want these nice light areas to, to spill over where it shouldn't be. So even though it was pretty rough in how I laid it first out, now that I'm zoomed in, I can go in and kind of clean it up a little bit. And some areas got too little, like that. And that, that bar right here. And then um, I can go with a click shift click type of approach here as well with my eraser. Click shift click erase. Click shift click erase. Click shift click erase. Click shift click erase. Same thing here, click, shift, click. And uh, yeah, it's starting to look like what I want it to look like. And now as a last thing, with a soft round brush, you just go in and clean up the areas that need to be cleaned up. And soften up some of these things so that they look like they nicely yeah, it gets a highlight and uh, and you can tell that I was much more conservative with how much highlights I gave versus shadows and um, because too much highlights I think could look it looks not as clean and the highlights lose some of their value but the shadows don't have that same effect okay and I'll take that down to about 60 and now you can see what effect those whites have. And I can tell um, that 60 is too much. And also that some of them are coming in co conflict here with the darks a little bit too much. So I can just use with my soft brush, start cleaning some of those whites up ever so carefully. And then I also see that my orange here is um, spilling out a little bit. So I can just quickly go in and do something like that. Pretty simple. Okay, I'll take a one minute break and give it some fresh eyes to look at it. All right, now um, the next thing I'll do is that I create a darks three. Um, but this darks, a third layer of darks, this darks is only uh, cast shadows that will appear in a certain few parts. Again I go to my base layer uh, so that I can only paint inside of my bike and I'm th I start thinking of where would the, there be some cast shadows casted from some of these parts into others. I go right there, right underneath here, 
right here, right there, even right there. Now I don't have to do every single part that would be uh, have a cast shadow, but some of them to just suggest maybe even right underneath here. And uh, yeah, probably right here and here as well. Okay. And these are pretty dark at the moment. And then just as previously, you want some of the underlying color to, to show up. It's not much, but it adds, uh, it adds some, some depth to the piece.